Hi everyone, this is Chandra with Wild Root and we're back with another backyard weed series. And I like to focus on edibles and medicinals that you can find in Northwest Florida. So the plant I wanna introduce you to today is one of my favorites. It's a really beautiful, it's actually a tree, not just a weed, but it is considered kind of invasive in this part of the country. And it's called the golden rain tree. So we're gonna flip the camera around and I'll show you this plant. So do some of you ever wonder if there could be benefits to some of the common ornamental plants or weeds in our yards? Well, today I'm going to introduce you to this plant. It has some health benefits and it has really beautiful yellow flowers. It's called the golden rain tree. It's also known as Colrio. Oh, let me start over again. <laughs> it's also known as Colrutaria elegans. I know it might be upsetting to some people that I have this tree in my yard, but it was actually a gift from someone over 20 years ago. And at the time I had no idea that it was considered invasive in Northwest Florida. I mean, I could just go ahead and cut it down. It is kind of annoying and I'll show you why. But I happen to believe that some of these plants that we consider invasive, invasive could potentially be useful in our changing world. There's a great little book. It's called Invasive Plant Medicine by Timothy Lee Scott. And it kind of highlights the value of some of these invasive plants as medicine. In this book, there's this idea by herbalist Stephen Booner that I believe is worth considering. And that is that using these invasive plants to treat new and emerging invasive pathogens. It seems kind of fitting because, you know, as we move into these different habitats and we destroy habitats because of the way that we live, you know, opportunistic plants, they kind of take hold. So I go back to our rain tree. This tree actually makes me really happy. I mean, look how beautiful it is this time of year. I mean, the flowers, they don't last very long, but they're such a brilliant yellow. They go on to form this really cool little seed pod. But that's kind of when the trouble starts. <laughs> so the pods drop and they form um, hundreds of seedlings and they're really hard to control in this part of the country in the southeast primarily. I think this planet grows all over North America. It comes from Taiwan and the leaves are bipinnate and the flowers form in a large panicle. The seed pods are like a three-sided paper balloon that are kind of like a reddish and then they turn a light pink when they fall off the tree. So this is a really super showy tree and it's also I love one thing I love about this tree is it kind of helps mark the seasons because you can tell when the leaves come on in the spring and then when the flowers come on later in the summer it's like the end of summer. So this is a deciduous tree provides really nice shade in the summertime but the tree itself is not very strong so the branches tend to um, dry and they snap. But what's so great about this plant? The flowers are beneficial for the eyes. I would actually make a wash for if you had like eye infection or conjunctivitis, like I would use the flowers for that. The leaves can also be cooked and eaten. Though like a lot of these types of foods, I don't know if I would consider it a great food source. It's more like a, um, a famine food. That's what I would think of. It's not, it's not a, one I would go for right away. The seeds could also be roasted and then eaten. But again, I'm thinking more like famine food. Hey you guys, this is just a reminder that I'm a trained herbalist and I'm just presenting this information for educational purposes only. Always do your own research. I think one of the best things for this plant is that it's just really beautiful and it's great for the eyes, but it could also be used as a natural dye. So the mature leaves are said to be useful as a black dye and the flowers as a yellow dye. And I thought I would give both of these a try um, I did try the leaves, but I it, nothing happened. So I'm just wondering if I either I didn't do it right or possibly they have to be dried. You can see here that I boiled the flowers 
and I used a piece of just white cotton fabric. You can see where I, I tested this fabric here and I dyed a little piece. I think it was kind of impressive, though I would hardly call this yellow, but I still like it. I have a friend who works with natural dyes and um, I think I might tell her about this because I think she might find it useful. If I were looking for a shade tree to plant in my yard, this is not one that I would plant. Maybe you could plant it, you could get away with it in a northern climate, but not in the southeast because you're just going to have these little guys popping up all over the place. As a medicinal, I would gather the flowers while they're still on the plant and then just dry them. I love learning new information about common plants and sharing this with you. So I'm gonna share a link in the description to the book Invasive Plant Medicine. And I'm also gonna to link to my edible and medicinal weeds playlist so you can learn a little bit more about these weedy wonders. Hey, I hope you all enjoyed that. And if you did, be sure to check out our other backyard weed videos. And I'll make sure to link to a couple other ones. And also be sure to subscribe and like. Thanks a bunch. See you all in the next one.